making a new video on outside in uh, my new uh, little sort of meditation slash yoga pavilion that I built in my backyard. Um, it's uh, not painted yet. Perhaps I'll make a video showing it once it's painted. But I was just um, thinking about um, <clears throat> the will to comfort and what it implies. Uh, the will to sort of avoid being harmed, the will to avoid any sort of negative, what that actually would do to you if you were to cultivate it, as opposed to it simply being part of our makeup, one of many desires. If you were to say that the will to comfort is a major, or perhaps the determinant um, will that we have, um, inherently, and not just most people, but all people, uh, or enough people, I guess, I think that it would have actually implications if we were to, to sort of say that the will to comfort is the main sort of impetus behind our actions. Um, and as I say, there is a difference between something that simply is inherent in us and something that we want to actually cultivate, or at least not necessarily cultivate, but I guess attend to, a cynic might say pander to. Um, for example, when I say what, what are the implications of the will to comfort, um, let's take the example of Plato's cave. Um, if you were to say that that is the will that actually makes the most sense, and I'm sort of going with Plato and Sophie here, uh, because uh, each one sort of makes an interesting point. I would say that Plato makes the sort of elitist sort of ubermenschish kind of point, whereby it's actually a good thing to get out of the cave, and even if the sunlight blinds you, at least it's the truth. Uh, it's reality, and you may actually like it, but it could also kill you and drive you mad, which is exactly what uh, Zopfi implies. In fact, I would say that Zopfi sort of baldly asserts that it will drive you insane, um, whereas Plato kind of leaves it open. I tend to agree with Plato, obviously, but I will say this. I think it would drive a lot of people insane uh, to see reality for what it actually is. <clears throat> Um, let's uh, look at that. You take somebody who's sitting in the cave, and all he's ever known is being in the cave and looking at those shadow images dancing on the wall in front of him and hearing sounds that he can't really account for, but he's sort of um, developed this elaborate mythology that he then discusses with his fellow prisoners, uh, who, again, don't know that they're prisoners. <laughs> it's the only reality they've ever known. Um, okay, so we've got a group of prisoners. One prisoner is yanked out, tossed out into the sunlight. He's not asked, or anything, nothing is explained to him what he's going to do, what, what's, what's going to happen to him, essentially. He's not going to do anything. Something is going to befall him. There's a difference. He's tossed out into the sunlight. Good chance he will go insane. Good chance it will simply blast his mind to atoms, and you know he'll have some sort of psychotic break or something like that, and he won't be able to handle it. Um, <clears throat> there's a good chance of that. There's a good chance, or a chance at least, that he'll be tossed out into the sunlight, and he'll go, Wow! I can't believe I've been rotting down in that cave forever. I love it out here. I never want to go back there. Dogs and winos, eh? Not a very nice combination. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Um, but anyway, um, there's a good chance, you know, that being tossed into the blinding sunlight will drive somebody crazy, and there's a good chance that, you know, they'll have some sort of ecstatic experience and will, will want to stay out there. I would say that chances are, however, most people are, would be so sort of rutted or addicted to the cave or um, stuck to the idea, yeah, I did use the word addicted, <laughs> uh, stuck to the idea of the cave, even though it's not real in the absolute sense, it's comfortable to them. It's what they know. It's the sort of, their circle of comfort is that cave. They don't want to come out. Um, the guy that you tossed out involuntarily who had some sort of breakdown, you put him back in there, and maybe over time he'll be okay once he goes back into the cave. Um, now, superimpose the story I just told with The Matrix, the movie The Matrix. That's an interesting one, eh? You know? 
Oh boy, this steak tastes awful good and ignorance is bliss. Mm. I hate to condemn the entirety of the human race, but it wouldn't surprise me if most of us would make that choice. Um, luckily, uh, we live in a civilization, more noise, where um, that kind of thing is uh, pretty much taken for granted. The cave is there. The cave is Walmart. The cave is McDonald's. The cave is the corner bar where you can get drunk every Saturday night and actually feel like you've accomplished something and entertained yourself. Um, the cave is any number of things that um, make you feel comfortable in Western society, that make you feel okay, that make you feel uh, like it's secure in the cave and that nothing horrible and sudden will happen to you. That's, uh, that's comfort to me. That's kind of, you know, last man-ish, isn't it? Um, now, um, let's say, however, that you're strangled by life in a cave. It, it intellectually, emotionally, physically throttles you. You see your body atrophying, your mind is turning to mush. You're, dr you're driven crazy by the banality of life in the cave. Uh, it's not necessarily that it horrifies you, but you can conceive of something better. And maybe you've actually got evidence that there is something better out there. Maybe. Hard to say. Um, but let's just say that in any case, you're not okay in the cave. Um, the will to comfort is not something that is decisive to you. You want something more, and you are willing to actually go get it. Um, the herd versus the Ubermensch? I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't like the term Ubermensch, uh, in this context at least, because I don't think there's anything arrogant or superior or wonderful about wanting to know what all of this is, um, about Truman wanting to know what this little Pleasantville village is and what's behind it all. Um, I don't think that there's um, anything particularly fabulous about it, but some of us are made up like that. Um, some of us are willing to risk it are willing to risk um, coming out of the cave, unplugging ourselves from the matrix, stepping out into the real world, um, where things are not so comfortable, but they give the perception of being more real. And that's, again, the, you know, a lot of people who have this modern ennui with Western civilization have that feeling that it's all false. There's something like being in, in the village and that, 1960s series, The Prisoner, TV's proudest moment, if you ask me, um, where everything you could possibly want is in the village. Why are you going out? Why do you have to escape? What is wrong with things as they are here? Just because I want to escape from a place doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It may simply be that it's incompatible with people like me. Um, one could even say that this is something of an eccentric's manifesto. I've been a lifelong eccentric. I don't fit in anywhere. I don't care. I never wanted to. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's an interesting thought. The will to comfort to some people is out and out toxic. Um, what are we to do about that? Um, I don't know. But I do say that there's got to be some sort of compatibilism worked out here. Like, I... I I can't bring myself to hate everybody when I walk out into the street and see, you know, these drones going about their blind daily lives. That looks that way to me. Uh, you know, again, you go to Walmart, I go there occasionally because they stock stuff that I want to have. Um, and you look at the people in there. I consciously try to cultivate a sort of benign view of these people. I never used to. I used to hate them. I used to go, look at these brain-dead drones. 
they're just where they're comfortable. Just because I'm not comfortable in there, in that nice little coddled prison that they live in, which only looks like a prison from my point of view, doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with their world. It's just not my world. And by the same token, though, one must be honest. They may not show me the same degree of forbearance. In fact, I have evidence that they don't. <laughs> that they are just barely tolerating me, and that if things go a certain way in our society, I'm facing being tied to a pole and have a pile of wood set fire underneath my feet. I understand that. That's Every eccentric knows that feeling. Um, in one way or another, the mob will get you if you step too far out of line. And what is the mob ultimately demanding? Don't rock the boat. Don't disturb my peace of mind, my comfort. <laughs>